Hello viewers, in today's session we are going to discuss some important problems related to the Fourier transform of Dirac delta function and its derivative, right? So here uh, we'll uh, quickly see the definition of Fourier transform of a, a function and then uh, we'll solve some problems uh, related to the Fourier transform of delta function and its derivatives. So viewers, let us first consider the definition of the infinite Fourier transform of uh, some function, say f of t, right? So the uh, Fourier transform of some function, say f of t, is defined by this integral uh, that is uh, minus infinity to infinity. And here we have e raised to minus i s t that is i times s times t and here we have the function uh, f of t right so this is the infinite fourier transform of some function uh, f of t and the fourier transform is denoted by f of s so now let us consider the definition of uh, dirac delta function in terms of integral so we know that the integral minus infinity to infinity and here we have some function say uh, g of t g of t and here we have delta of t minus a uh, dt is equal to uh, the value of the function uh, g of t at this point a that is the g of a so the delta function may be defined like this so now let us first find out the Fourier transform of the Dirac delta function, right? So let us uh, first take the function f of t as the delta function that is delta t minus a. So the Fourier transform of the function f of t which is the Dirac delta function is uh, given by uh, this integral that is minus infinity to infinity and here we have e raised to minus i times s times t and f of t is our delta function so we have delta of t minus a uh, dt right so now uh, to get the Fourier transform of delta of t minus a we need to uh, solve this integral so now uh, to solve this integral we'll make use of this definition now see here we have delta of t minus a and here uh, we have a function a g of t uh, associated with the delta function right so now the uh, function g of t may be taken as this function right and uh, uh, this definition says that uh, the value of this integral is equal to the value of this function at uh, this point uh, t is equal to a because we know that the delta function has uh, the value only at this point that is t is equal to a right so the spike uh, it occurs at only this point and uh, apart from this point the delta function is zero everywhere right so here g of t is e raised to minus i times s times t so the value of this integral uh, can be obtained by taking t is equal to a so we have e raised to minus i s times a right so the Fourier transform of uh, delta function that is delta of t minus a is given by this expression e raised to minus i s times a so now as an illustration let us uh, find out the Fourier transform of uh, these three uh, delta functions right so we'll utilize this result now see in the first case we have delta of t minus 1 so if we compare uh, these two functions we have a is equal to uh, 1 Right? So the Fourier uh, transform of delta of t minus a can be obtained by taking a is equal to 1 here. So we have e raised to minus i s times 1. So we have e raised to minus i s. Now similarly the Fourier transform of delta of t plus pi. 
So now if we compare these two functions, we have uh, a is equal to uh, minus pi. So the Fourier transform of this function is e raised to minus i s uh, times a, a is minus pi. So we have e raised to minus minus plus. So we have i s and pi, right? Now the Fourier transform of f of delta of t. Right? Now delta of t can be uh, written as delta of t minus 0. Right? So these two are same. So we have uh, the value of a as 0 in this case. So Fourier transform of delta of t is given by taking a is equal to 0. So we have e raised to minus i s times 0. That is e raised to 0. So this is equal to 1. Right now, let us consider uh, the Fourier transform of the derivatives of delta function. So now we have to find the Fourier transform of the derivative of a delta function that is delta prime of t minus a here delta prime of t here uh, delta double prime t. Right. So for uh, obtaining the Fourier transform of the derivatives of a function, we will make use of one important uh, property of uh, Fourier transform, right? So the property says that the Fourier uh, transform of a function, say the nth derivative of a function is given by uh, the expression i s raised to n and here we have f of s, right? So this is an important rule uh, that is the Fourier transform of nth derivative of a function f of t, right? So f n t, uh, this n denotes the order of the derivative. So the Fourier transform of the nth derivative of a function f of t is given by uh, i times s raised to n where n is the order of the derivative and f of s is the Fourier transform of f of t, right? So we'll make use of this result to find out uh, the values of these three uh, expressions. So now uh, let us consider this case. So here uh, the Fourier transform of delta prime of t minus a uh, can be written with the help of this result, right? So here we have the first derivative only. So the value of n should be equal to 1, right? So we have i s raised to 1 and f of s. So f of s is the Fourier transform of f of t, right? And f of t is given by a delta of t minus a right and f of s is the Fourier transform of f of t that is delta of t minus a and we have just calculated that uh, the Fourier transform of uh, delta of t minus a uh, which is also written as f of s right so this is e raised to minus i s a so here uh, we can now write i s i s raised to 1 is i s and here we have uh, e raised to minus i times s times a right n is equal to 1 here so we can now write it as i times s e raised to minus i times s times a so the Fourier transform of delta prime of t minus a is given by uh, this expression. So now let us consider the Fourier transform of delta uh, prime of t, right? So this can also be written as f of delta prime of t minus zero. So now uh, if we compare uh, these two results, uh, we can see that the value of a may be taken as zero. Right. So when we take a is equal to zero in this expression, uh, we'll get uh, the uh, Fourier transform of delta prime of t as i times s and e raised to zero. Why? Because uh, a is equal to uh, zero here. So we have e raised to zero as one 
and this is simply i s times 1 that is equal to i s so the fourier transform of delta prime of t is given by i times s so now consider the fourier transform of delta double prime of t so now here we see that we have the second derivative of delta function so the value of n is equal to 2 right so we can now write the fourier transform of this function as i s and here uh, n the value of n is 2 and then we have f of s right so this is i square s square f of s i square is equal to minus 1 because this is a complex number and we have minus s square f of s now f of s is the fourier transform of uh, the delta function that is delta of t right so f of s can be uh, obtained by taking the fourier transform of delta of t uh, which we have just calculated uh, which is equal to uh, 1 right so here uh, we can now substitute the value of uh, f of s which is equal to 1 so we have minus s square times 1 is equal to minus s square right so viewers the Fourier transform of delta double prime of t is given by minus s square and remember f of s is Fourier transform of the delta function that is delta of t uh, which is equal to 1 which we have just calculated. So now let us calculate the Fourier transform of the third derivative of delta function uh, t minus 1. Right. So for here, uh, we can see that uh, our function f of t is given by a delta of t minus 1. Right. And uh, here uh, the third derivative occurs. So the value of n is 3. So we can now write the Fourier transform of third derivative of delta function t minus 1 is given by i s. And here... Uh, we have n that is 3 and then we have f of s right and f of s is the Fourier transform of f of t and f of t is our function delta of t minus 1 right so here we have minus infinity to infinity and e raised to minus i times s times t and we have the function delta of t minus 1 dt and we have just calculated this uh, uh, transform Fourier transform of delta of t minus 1 so take so now taking uh, t is equal to 1 in this uh, function we have e raised to minus i times s times 1 that is e raised to minus i s right so the Fourier transform of uh, uh, delta of t minus 1 is e raised to minus i s so now uh, we can substitute uh, this value over here so we have uh, i cube s cube and then e raised to minus i times s so i cube can be written as i square times i i square is minus 1 times i this is minus i so here we have minus i s cube e raised to minus i times s so the Fourier transform of the third derivative of delta function t minus 1 is given by uh, this expression. So now if we wish to find out the Fourier transform of nth derivative of the delta function t, uh, then uh, we can write uh, the expression for the Fourier transform of the nth derivative of delta function with the help of this result. Right? So here uh, we have uh, the function f of t as uh, delta function that is delta of t and we have just seen that the uh, Fourier transform of uh, delta function was 1 right. So here we can now write i s raised to n and f of s. So f of s is the Fourier transform of 
the function that is delta of t right and this is one so we have we can now write i s raised to n times one so this is i raised to n s raised to n right so the in general the fourier transform of the nth derivative of the delta function is given by i raised to n times s raised to n where i is the uh, complex number uh, that is i square is given by minus 1. So now if we uh, wish to find out the Fourier transform of the fourth derivative of delta function t then we can simply substitute n is equal to 4 in this expression. Right, so this is i raised to 4, s raised to 4, and i raised to 4 is i square, uh, whole square, and i square is minus 1, minus 1 is square, that is positive 1. So here we have plus 1, s raised to 4, so this is s raised to 4. So the Fourier transform of this function is given by s raised to 4, where this parameter s may be real or complex.